This is Sarah and welcome back to another No Knots video. Today we are going to use the GTT program to actually make our own patterns. So in today's video I'm going to cover how to set up your cards, how to do the turning directions, and then we're going to go over really quickly how to read the um, pattern that you created to actually set up your cards. You can find my full tutorial video on how to do that in the description and I'll put a link up in the corner. Okay, so this is the pattern we're going to make today. It's really simple, uh, called a ram's horn or a kivrim pattern. Um, not a lot of cards and not a lot of turning, so it should be really simple to follow along and set up. So, to get started, we're going to go up to the menu and click Create, Thread and Pattern. You can see we can do double face, brocades, and twisted patterns. I haven't gone into too much depth myself about those, so we're, I'm going to stick primarily with the threaded in pattern for this video. And then you can see that under threaded in, we can also go all the way up to eight holes. We just want four holes. So just click four holes and that brings us to our workspace. So here is where our pattern's gonna show up. Here's gonna be our picks, our forwards and uh, backwards turning. If we were going to flip cards, um, this would be the place where it would show that they're twisting. That means going from a threaded in direction of S to Z or vice versa. And this is just a place for notes. Now I don't really need that, so I'm going to turn it off just to get rid of it, which is up here, this little note card looking icon, show or hide notes. That gives us a little more space. All right, now we need our cards. We're going to go up to this little card icon, click that, and we can tell it how many cards we want. For this pattern, we only need 12 cards. Click the checkbox. And that puts up our cards with the four uh, color positions. And we could do that here. We can decide that we want all these to be blue. Or we can tell everything A, B, C, D can be blue. Or we can say that only the five card, we can say that only B is going to be white and D is going to be white. So there's a lot of different things we can do in here. I don't usually do my colors in this area, and I'll show you how we can do that um, in another area. This is also where we set up our S and Zs. In, in a GTT program, uh, S and Z are for threading direction, not slant direction. So for this pattern, we want all the way to card seven, right here, to be Zs, and the rest to be Ss. And then we can hit accept. So let's, these arrows down here are where we're actually going to do our forwards and backwards pick. So the up arrow is for going forwards, the back arrow, reverse, is for going backwards. So go forward four times. And it shows you one through 12 card is going to go forward for four picks. Now that's really small. I can't hardly see that. So let's make that bigger. I'm going to use our plus and minus buttons up here on the menu and just zoom in. All right. So you can see that we made all our cards blue except for the five card, um, white. But how do we know which numbers that are? Well, there's another little icon right here that will show the actual card numbers and the pick numbers. So I'm going to click that, and there's our card and pick numbers. Now, I actually don't want those cards' uh, whole positions to be white, so I am going to pick red. And I'm going to go over on this side and just click in the actual uh, positions where I want my colors to show up. And you'll see in just a minute, as I finish doing this, exactly... Oops, put that in the wrong lane. Now you can have more than one color going at a time. All I did was click inside the color boxes, pick my color, 
And now this uh, blue color is actually on my right mouse click. So if I right mouse click that, it'll change. Left mouse click is the left uh, color. So left mouse click, right mouse click. Left, right. All right, so that is the first four picks of my pattern. How do we do the turning? How do we get this to go backward? Well, if we just hit the backward arrow, that's what we get. That's just all the cards going backwards. That's not right. So let's undo that. Come up here to this little uh, red backwards arrow. Undo. Undo it up to four. You can also do um, clear the entire pattern if for some reason you wanted to do that. So right here, this little bar, clear design, and that will clear everything. But we want the first four to be all together. So one, two, three, four. And now we want just cards three through five and eight through, uh, excuse me, three through five and eight through 10 to go backward. So we're gonna go down to this area right here and we are going to say, these are all going forward, but we want three, four, five to go backward. Six and seven can go forward, eight, nine, and 10 to go backward. So still clicking the forward arrow, just go one, two, three, four, and there's our design. Now we need to get everything to go forward again. We can come down here and tell all these to just go forward again. Or, since this is one full repeat of our design, we can go over to our turning direction instructions and click the beginning of the pattern. Uh, it has to be the beginning of the pattern. If you click the beginning of the end of the pattern and try and do a shift on a, uh, this is all Windows, so shift, click on the first one, right click, hit repeat, that's not right. So we're gonna do click where we wanna get rid of it. We could just undo it or we can click from the beginning to the end, and right click delete. So this is why you have to click the beginning of your repeat to shift the end of your repeat and then right click, hit repeat. We do that a couple times, and we'll zoom out again, and we can see there's our pattern. That was pretty easy, pretty simple. Now this uh, show grid, this just breaks everything down so that you can actually see where each thread and which direction they're going. Removing that just gives you a little clearer image of the pattern. Now let's go over some of these other <clears throat> Excuse me, let's go over some of these other uh, icons. So let's turn our grid back on. Now the one right next to, to that one is to separate the grid into four packs. So we've got one, two, three, four, a line. One, two, three, four. You can't really see it because I'm on red. And there's a line. Um, so you can turn that off and on. Sometimes that helps you find your place in the pattern. And we've got show colors. So say you wanted to just print this out and color it in yourself, you can. Um, or you can just change the colors using their color palette. Let's go over that really quick segue here. And we want to change all the blues to black. So we're going to just click the black. We've already got our blue selected here, and now we want to replace the, the blue with black. There's three different options. You can just switch. This will switch anywhere. The colors, just switch them. This one will take this left color and switch it with the, uh, the right, excuse me, they will switch the right color with the left color. So now we're back to blue, and this one switches the left color with the right color. So now we've got all those to be black. What if we want these to be red, but I don't like that red and I don't like that really dark red. I want a different color red. 
Well, how do we do that? So now we're going to go up to this little color palette. This brings up all our available color spaces. And we're going to take our red, double click it. And here's uh, some default ones, or you can make a custom color. So define custom color. And here we've got our uh, color picker. So I want my red to be kind of orangey. So let's go kind of like an orangey red. And then we're going to click Add to Custom Colors. OK. And hit Upset. Now we switched that really bright red with this kind of orangey red. And it automatically did it. But what if we wanted to take another color that we aren't using so we can kind of switch back and forth really quick? I'm just going to take this kind of peachy color here, use that one, except so now we can switch between the two colors, see which one we like better. So we're going to switch primary and secondary color, and we can go back and forth real quick. Now here is our default palette. You can choose when the program loads which default colors show up. I never use it. I just change the colors when I want. You could also make your own default palette. But again, I just usually change the colors when I need to. OK, so we've changed our colors. I'm going to change it back to that orangey red. And now we can go on with our uh, going over the menu here. So this one will show you which cards are changing direction. So that's what these red dots mean, that at pick number five, which if you go one, two, three, three, four, they don't line up 100%, then on pick five, these cards are going to change direction. This one shows you if they twisted. So and say instead of let's do one, two, three, four, instead of three through um, five changing uh, turning direction, we twist them, which would mean changing their S and Zs. So we're going to go three through five and then eight through 10. Now we can have all the cards still going forward. One, two, three, four. But they've twisted, which means we've changed their S and Zs. So we'd have to change their S and Z back. Um, let's see, 8, 9, 10. And then all the cards can still turn forward, but they've twisted. So these diamonds mean twisting, and the dots mean turning. All right, turn those off. We've got, whoops, this is the one I want. This will show you what a what hole is being used at that moment. Let's change the black to blue just so we can actually see it. Oops, I don't want to change that. I want to change the black. There. So now you can see that in these holes, Back to the beginning that we can see D, C, B, A, and then it continued forward. These ones continued forward with D. But this one went backward with A. Then it went, these were going forward. These are going backward, forward. So you can actually see what holes, uh, what uh, letter positions everything's in, which is handy because this pattern is missing one more thing, and that would be this our draft. And our draft does not have what A, B, C, and D are. So how do we figure that out really quick? Well, D was the beginning. The cards are going in a V here. So if we go back down here, we can see that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, white, and then red all across for that first row is right here. So that's D. That would mean that would be C, B, A. Again, if you want to see uh, a video on how to actually read this pattern and go into depth and actually warp up a, 
a pattern from a GTT pattern, you can check out my other video. Um, okay, so let's keep going on here. We can turn off our letters. We don't really need those right now. And let's see what else we got. Well, this one shows forwards and backwards instead of uh, letters. So it shows you that everything here is going forward. The first two guards are going forward. The next three are going backward, forward, backward, forward. All right, that one showed our pattern. This one shows our uh, pick number and card numbers. This one's just more colors you can pick. So now idling cards. We haven't talked about idling cards yet, but that is another thing you can do down here by clicking a, the number above the, the colors and above the backwards, forwards, and S and Zs. This will keep your cards from moving like they're float like a float. So if we just click uh, forward, you can see that these cards are just they're static. They're not turning forwards or backwards, they're idling. So that'll create, for however many picks you do, a long float. Now it doesn't show over here which cards are idling. I wish it did, but it just shows you that three through 10 are actually moving. And that one and two and um, 11 and 12 are just stag uh, static. So let's undo that. Turn off our idle. And we've got show long floats. Again, that would be if your cards are um, turning backwards and forwards after each pick. Then you'll see those. So say we do three, four, five, go forward. Now, this is going to be a mess because it's I'm not really paying attention to what I'm doing. Let's go backwards. Whoops, I did that wrong. So that was three through five forward, and then backward, and forward or backwards, and forwards. You can see that these cards are now highlighted because they're just, they're also creating a float. It's almost like staying stagnant, um, a static card, because they're just going forwards and backwards after each pick, which creates a long float. Let's undo that. All right, so now we've got our generic uh, icons up here. You've got open to open a new pattern. So here's some of my patterns. And the only thing with GTT is it doesn't warn you that when you close something, it doesn't warn you if you'd like to save. Now, I didn't do anything on this one, so it's not asking me to save, but be careful when you close a window because it doesn't give you the option to save. You have to actually hit uh, no, don't close, save. Now, it's gonna. it doesn't just uh, save the existing file. It wants to make a new file every time. So you have to actually overwrite your old file and then hit yes, save. And then you can hit yes, close. So if I want to save this, I have to make a whole new file. So save, and now I can close that. Yes, I want to close. And then here's our old pattern. All right, we can print the pattern, which is the forwards and backwards. It doesn't show you the repeats. So you have to know that these numbers here from 1 through 12 forward and then these here, this next four set will repeat. It doesn't actually mark it like you do see on Pinterest patterns. Now you can do card positions, which I find a little wonky looking. You copy it to clipboard. I usually don't use this. Uh, let's see, there's our cards. Now one thing I didn't show you here was that you can have all S's, all Z's, 
uh, every other one S and Z, every other one Z and S, and then just swap in. It's just going back and forth. So like if we had our original pattern, whoops, we could swap. So this would be all S and this would all be Z. Now, say we wanted to add borders to this. Well, could we just say I want one extra card on each side, so from 12 cards I want 14 cards? Well, all I did was add two other cards to the end. And so you basically have to plan your borders ahead of time if you're going to use do the borders at the same time you're doing your pattern. Because all it does now is show... See, it should show as an idling card. Yeah, because we didn't include those last two cards in our pattern. We'd have to go all the way back to the beginning and then redo the pattern uh, to include those. If we want them to be on the borders, we have to redo this. So this would be another Z. And that would shift everything over. We'd have to go back, redo the colors so that they're all lined up. And it doesn't like looking at the beginning. So I'm going to delete some of this. Go back, redo my colors here. But you're like, oh, wait, it's not like that doesn't work like that. So you'd have to go literally clear the pattern. Start over one, two, three, four to actually get the right. So you really do have to plan ahead. And let's see. All right, and now we've got those two extra cards incorporated into our pattern. So instead of three through five, now we're going to be four through six, skip two, and nine through 11. One, two, three, four. So like I said, plan your borders ahead of time. All right, this here, let's see, we're on, we were on cards. This one shows you a draft. Um, the only problem is you have to think of this draft as it's not right. It's upside down, it's reversed. If you flip it or you spin it clockwise, the ABCs will be in the right direction, but the, the colors will be wrong. So you have to uh, just don't use it. It's I mean it's it's a big pain in the butt to try and figure it out. It's it's backwards. It's completely backwards. If you can use this one right here, you can save out just this so that you can use print that out instead of using this wonky, very wrong, very backwards pattern draft. Just don't use it. Okay, that was our notes. We don't need any notes card list that just shows the cards as they uh, current hole positions as you do your forwards and backwards so we definitely need that and you can save out just the image so ram's horn now we'll save just the the actual pattern that doesn't save the the instructions And there it is. So it just shaved, show, uh, saved out the, the draft and the picks, but not the actual instructions. Now we can print the image, just the image, not the instructions. And we can copy image to clipboard so you can bring it into another image uh, program like um, Microsoft Paint, 
I don't have that installed, so I can't really show you. Um, you can, I what I do, actually, I don't even use these. What I just do is take a uh, print screen. If you don't know how to print screen on your computer, you can do a Google search on how that works for your computer, but I just do a print screen. And then uh, copy and paste it into my uh, image program, which I'm using Photoshop, so that's how I do mine. Let's see, we've got our, where are we? We can, I'm not actually sure what those do. I never use them. We've got our, our zoom in and zoom out. We have change display ratios. Now I leave these at default just because it gives me a fairly accurate representation. But you can change these to if you are a really tight beater and you can get your things, your picks to be almost square, then you can change your height to be, you know, that's you know a really tight pattern. Or if you're a really loose weaver, you can change your heights to be, I don't know, let's try eight. Well, that's a really elongated pattern. So, but I generally leave it at the defaults because that's a fairly accurate representation. All right, what's next? Rotate display, obviously just rotates it around. Show reverse a band. That shows you what the back of the band is going to look like. So it brings up a whole other screen. If this is what's coming up on your weaving, then you did your S and Zs wrong. So this lets you know if you're doing, if you screwed something up. And this shows you the direction the threads are going. What was that one called? Change between block versus real image. So this are blocks. Let's zoom in. Let's turn off reverse. Zoom in. So now we're on like a grid. So you can actually see that if we were to draft this pattern on graph paper, this is what it would look like. You can see which direction the threads are going and the colors that are being used. So let's change it back to our kind of what the actual threads will lay like. And then clear design, we already did that one. Undo, we've already done that one. And that is pretty much the basics of how to use this program. I mean, you can go and do some pretty complex stuff. Um, let's see, where's a good one? Well, that one's a simple forwards and backwards turning. That's not actually that complex. I don't name my stuff very well. Um, let's see here. Here's a nut. Here's a here's a uh, what's it called? Sulo Sulawesi. I think I'm saying that right. Probably not. But this is a Sulawesi base pattern. So you can see that we're getting an, a really interesting motif here in the middle. Lots of turning. It's got to make these bigger so you can actually see all the instructions. So, like I said, this is 40 cards across, and one repeat is 56 picks. So, there you can pretty much recreate any design you want from Pinterest, so you can plop in your own colors. I think that's what I was doing with this one. You can make your own patterns. Let's see, where's my fish? I don't have these name very right. Sort by name. That would help. Oh, here's my turtle. I shared this on the Facebook group page. So this is my own pattern that I created. Just a little turtle. And again, lots of turning. But the way I actually did this is I didn't go through each card the way these patterns are done is by uh, turning two cards at once. So this is kind of an advanced tip. 
you can actually uh, set card packs. Like if you're going to have certain cards that are always going to turn together. So that's how I did this. I did, instead of doing 36 cards, I did 18, which is half. And then I broke them into packs. I broke the 36 into packs. Whoops. I don't want to break it up. And it doesn't want to make it bigger. There's some bugs in this program. So you can see I've got two cards per card pack all the way to 36. And so I was able to just say I want cards one through two or pack one and cards, what is this, 19 through 20 or pack 10 to turn forwards or backwards. So it's a, it's, it kind of makes it a little easier than trying to make sure that you're doing you know, two cards at a time or if you're doing something that has four cards all turning together or what have you, then you can split them into card packs. Let's see, I don't really use a whole lot of these other functions because most of them are already on the menu, the quick, the quick icons menu. Palettes. Pattern details, card list, yeah, all these are pretty much already on this menu, so I don't really use them. Um, I don't think I'm going to get into doing a double-faced pattern. I'm not quite sure how this program does it yet. You can also do broken twill fonts and lettered bands. Um, I've seen uh, the GTT website actually has some patterns and fonts that you can download along with the pattern. So that's a way to kind of experiment and get a get an idea of how it's done. Let's just open one of those ones really quick. Uh, double face. Let's try whatever this swan is. So here's a double faced image of a swan. And this is what it's going to look like when we actually weave it out. That doesn't look like double face. That actually looks like twill. Yeah, that's a 3-1 twill, so I don't know why it's called double faced. But here you can see the different setups. Yeah, that's totally twill. Let's go actual double faced. Uh, where are the fonts? There's the fonts. I need, oh, we got to change it to the there has a different file extension, so we need the font file extension to see it. And we've got some nice gothic letters here. I haven't played with this very much at all, so I'm not even going to attempt to try and figure it out. I'm pretty sure this is turned sideways, that this would be the unwoven and this would be the woven. So you'd read it from left to right instead of from bottom to top, just from the direction of the uh, the cells are going. And there's what it would look like woven out. So I think that's going to pretty much do it for me. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments, or you can find me on the Facebook group, Tablet Weaving Sharing. I'll put a link to that in the description. And... Aloha.